Hey, Tim Span here. I wanted to show you a walkthrough of this travel advisory app. There's a lot of screenshots, but you know, so you log into the environment, run Cloud Era data flow, whether this is in a temporary sandbox or in your permanent production environment. Go to the dashboard, we see what we've got running. Catalog for uh, stuff flows we have uh, saved. Ready flow gallery. I Highly recommend start with something. There's something here that's a good start for you, especially if you have to push something to a secure version of Kafka, pick one of those. Uh, I'm going to go to my flow. Here you can see it, uh, save my query here, and it's got my uh, draft sitting here. And fortunately, I started my test session. Uh, if you're in a designer and you haven't sent your test session, definitely... Uh, set that test session takes a little while to get started because it's got to launch uh, kubernetes pods and all that kind of stuff so uh let's get in there hopefully uh my security is good and we're uh loaded okay our flow is loaded here and we can see if we haven't selected anything i'll show you the top level this is a traditional NIFI process group. See, so we have it named. Uh, default back pressure in there. Maybe up that a little bit. Um, let's see what we go to now. We'll go to the first processor. This is that invoke one. Like I said, if you need to add one, go to processors, add them. It'll limit them down to what you're looking for. Be like that. And you see a whole bunch of other ones here. Uh, depending on what you want to do, you know, don't use the get HTTP. Definitely stick with the uh, invoke Twitter. Uh, we know what's going on with Twitter. Okay, so we got this one. I'm going to show you, since we have an active test session, if we didn't start that up, do that as soon as you're ready to start building. Got to get that uh, Kubernetes environment going. If I want to test something, sometimes I'll just run it once. If I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, here I do know what's going to happen, but I don't want to send too much data in here if I'm just looking at stuff. And I can stop things at certain points. Maybe we'll uh, step through each one. I'm just going to stop a couple of uh, steps here. Now you can organize these any way you want. Sometimes I'll do them in a straight line. Some people like to go across. Uh, you have a lot of artistic uh, options here. So let's run one again. And we just run it once. It turns blue when it's running already finished here you can see it in the queue and that way if I want to look at it I can look at the data you look in the data viewer here this is uh, RSS so you format it XML so which is nice but not the prettiest format you want to look at so uh, we'll go in there let's uh, start that next step see if it processes we look in here it's got a reader and a writer, and we got bare bones uh, SQL select. We could change this if we want, if we want to limit what's coming back. And maybe you do, maybe you're only concerned with one country or a certain date or whatever. I'm going to check out the services. This is the XML one. We got the schema text here as a parameter. Uh, I'm parsing this because it's a little funky RSS here. And I don't want everything. I just want some parts of it. And you can decide if you want to change that. This is the writer. It's going to set that uh, schema for it. Take a look here. Pretty straightforward. We definitely use the schema registry sometimes. Write things out. Might be using that schema. Let's quickly look at the parameters. We need those for a lot of stuff. So we're not hard coding and very important for deployment. Okay, so I've got a password that's hidden. There's my workload name. I get that by going here, and I can go to the uh, profile, but I'm not going to do that right now. Some of these came default with ReadyFlow, which is nice. You don't have to worry about the SSL. This is the URL for getting data. Pretty easy to set that. And again, a lot of these come in based on the other thing. Grab these from my SMM, so I get uh, my secure point port 9093 uh, Kafka brokers, I got three. Set my unique uh, producer ID, get my schema. And we pointed to that, we that saved. I've got a schema here for 
parsing RSS smartly. I could also point that to the schema registry. I had that internal. This is the text. So when uh, I send a message to uh, Slack, what fields I want with some formatting, Slack uh, API doesn't let you send HTML or Markdown or anything, unfortunately. Webhook URL is secure. Uh, you need that in its uh, password to get into a Slack channel. So if I wanted to get into my Slack channel, send messages, I could do that. And we'll take a look. Actually, this is the, the Slack group we're going to be using. And I have a channel here where I send my new messages. And you can see it's HTML, also links to the actual uh, advisory. So we got that one record. Let's see what that looks like now. And the uh, viewer here in the cloud is really nice. You can see now it's JSON, a little bit easier to work with, which is nice. So we'll go back to the designer. Let's run the next step. And we are going to, we're up here, split the JSON. And we can see that show up here. I'll just list it before we even look because we know it's coming. And you can see here, broke it up a little bit, a little easier to work with. Then we got another step is uh, pretty straightforward. We're going to split the record. So we get one record per, and we'll see, you know, 200 records now from that one JSON. Uh, this is a big one. We're going to reformat these 200 records. And we'll take a look at these. And I'll just grab one of them. And you can see now we're an individual record with a title, date, and those fields that we had before. Plus, most importantly, the description. So let's go back to our uh, flow here while it's going along. And we'll start our split. We're going to update the record here. This one, if we take a look, going to uh, put some literals in there, uh, reformat how it goes. And then finally, we're going to push that record to, uh, to Kafka. Again, no failures. We'll pop into the subgroup for Slack and we'll run one Slack message. And we can come up here and we can see the new one. Pretty straightforward. Easy to test this. Once you uh, have tested things, you can uh, deploy them or change them, whatever you have. So here I could just go publish this, publish this a different name. I'm already in version five already. Uh, I could stop the test session and maybe uh, deploy it after I publish. Up to you, depends on what we want to do there. 